U.S. prohibited Ukraine attacking key Russian airfields. Washington has prohibited Kiev from attacking key Russian airfields with American weapons, the Washington Post writes, citing two Ukrainian officials. If Russia attacks or is about to attack Ukraine from its territory, Ukraine has the ability to retaliate against forces that attack it from abroad, explained Pentagon spokesman Major Charlie Dietz. In addition, as Dietz clarified, Ukraine could use U.S.-supplied air defense systems to strike Russian aircraft if they are going to open fire on Ukrainian airspace. At the end of May, Washington allowed Kyiv to launch strikes on Russian territory. On June the 3rd, John Kirby, coordinator for strategic communications at the National Security Council, clarified that the United States had authorized Ukraine to carry out precision and limited strikes on targets in Russia to disrupt attacks. Other Western countries, including Poland, Denmark, the Netherlands, etc., also allowed Kyiv to use the weapons transferred. Earlier, the Associated Press reported that Ukraine had already attacked Russia with American weapons. On June the 7th, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said that Ukraine attacked Belgorod using HIMARS multiple launch rocket systems a few hours after Washington's permission. On June the 21st, Politico, citing American officials, reported that the United States allowed Ukraine to use American weapons to strike the Russian military, not only in the Kharkov region, but also in other combat areas. Earlier, during a meeting with the heads of world news agencies, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that Moscow could give an asymmetric response to the supply of Western long-range weapons to Ukraine. He noted that supplies can go to those regions of the world where attacks will be made on sensitive facilities of those countries that do this against Russia. The nine-story building once DTE Energy's Trenton Channel Power Plant boiler house collapsed into a giant mound of rubble. A line of controlled explosives detonated across the base of the former Trenton Channel Power Plant's boiler house, just before 15-meter tall structure began collapsing along the Detroit River. DTE Energy officials said the collapse unfolded smoothly and as the utility had planned. Once the explosives were lit, the building collapsed upon itself and we were able to safely and successfully bring the boiler house down," Renee Tomina, DTE Energy's Senior Vice President of Project Management Organization told the Detroit News. The coal-burning power plant was retired in 2022 after nearly a century of generating electricity. It was demolished as part of DTE Energy's shift toward clean energy by building a battery storage facility. I think it went fantastic, just as we had planned," said Rene Tomina, the company's senior vice president of project management organization. Once the explosives were lit, the building collapsed upon itself and we were able to safely and successfully bring the boiler house down. As you saw, the smoke and dust dissipated over the water exactly as we expected. DTE Energy plans to build a large-scale battery storage facility at the site of the former Trenton Channel power plant a coal-burning power plant that was retired in 2022 after nearly a century of generating electricity downriver. The Trenton Channel Energy Center will be able to store 220 megawatts of electricity, enough juice to power 40,000 homes, according to the utility. something.